Previously, we discussed how the memory area of a process is effectively split into two parts, what's called the stack and what's called the heap. Whereas the stack effectively automatically grows and shrinks as functions are called and functions return, when we need more heap memory, we have to explicitly request it from the operating system, and when we're done with some heap memory, our process should give it back. Recall, though, that in our pigeon code, we never explicitly requested memory, and we never gave any of it back. In Pigeon, we could just create new objects, and we didn't have to worry about manually allocating memory for them, or giving the memory back when we're done with the objects. The reason we could get away with this is because Pigeon has a feature called Automatic Garbage Collection. With Automatic Garbage Collection, memory is allocated and deallocated automatically for us. We just have to worry about creating new objects, and when we're done with an object, we just ignore it, and it goes away eventually. It's the responsibility of the garbage collector to periodically, as our program runs, check and see if some memory is no longer being used, and if so, let that space be used for other objects, or just give it back to the operating system. Garbage collection is a really convenient feature because it means we don't have to manually allocate memory, and even better, we don't have to keep track of the memory which we allocate. This makes it much, much less likely that we're going to create a memory leak in our program. However, it is still possible to create a memory leak even if you have garbage collection, because the way the garbage collector is supposed to work is it looks at all the references on the stack, and as long as there is a chain of references pointing from the stack to some object on the heap, that object is not going to be collected. And so what can happen is that, say, you create a bunch of objects and you put them in a list, but then you forget about them. Well, as long as the list itself is not being collected, all of the things it points to are not going to get collected either. So effectively, you do have a memory leak because you're keeping around a bunch of objects that you don't need anymore. Garbage collection tends to be an inherent feature of a language. A language is designed with garbage collection in mind, or it's not. For instance, you conceivably could add garbage collection to the C programming language, but it would just largely defeat the purpose if you did. Arguably, the primary reason you'd still want to use the C language today is it's the language you use when you want to manually manage memory. The large majority, though, of languages used today do feature garbage collection. It's a fact of life that programmers are just going to make mistakes. When you're writing thousands and possibly millions of lines of code, it's in practice impossible not to make any mistakes. One big kind of mistake is a type error. A type error is simply when you perform an operation upon the wrong kind of data. So, for instance, in this pigeon code, we have a function defined that computes a factorial, and in this factorial, there's a line where we use a greater than operation. In pigeon, the greater than operation is only defined to have any meaning upon numbers. It doesn't make any sense to use the greater than with operands, which are things other than numbers, like, say, strings. So what's going to happen then when we call the factorial function with an operand which is not a number, in this case it's a boolean, the value true, true is going to be passed to n, and then when we reach the operation of greater than n1, the interpreter running our pigeon program is going to notice the mismatch of types. It's going to notice, hey, you can't feed a boolean to the greater than operation. It's invalid for that operation. So when that operation is reached, the interpreter detects the error and just aborts the program. Arguably, though, the real type error here is when we called factorial in the first place with something other than a number. The problem is that in Pigeon, because it's what's called a dynamic language, you can pass any kind of value to any parameter of any function. It doesn't check whether it's the right type or not. In contrast, if Pigeon were not a dynamic language and instead was a static language, meaning it has what's called a static typing system, then Pigeon would require us to denote somehow in code what type of value is accepted by each parameter of a function, what type of value is returned by that function, and what type of value is assigned to a variable. So in this example, we've declared that the factorial function returns a num, a number, and that its parameter, n, must also be a number, and that the variable inside, the local variable val, is also a number. And because of these declarations, the function can only return a number, it can only accept a number as its argument, and it only can assign numbers to the local variables val and n. It can't assign anything else. 
So these type declarations make the code more restrictive, but the advantage then is that before the program is even run, the compiler or interpreter can actually analyze the code and detect any type errors without having to run the program at all. So here, for example, when the compiler or interpreter looks at this code, it can see in the call to factorial that the wrong kind of argument is being passed because the factorial function is declared to accept the parameter of type num, not a boolean. Similarly, when we pass to factorial the value returned by a call to foo, the compiler or interpreter can detect the type error here before the program even runs because the function foo itself must have a declaration of what type of value it returns and so we can know without running the program at all whether or not the function foo is going to return the proper type to pass to factorial if it's going to return a number. If foo is declared to return something other than a number, the compiler can catch this problem and in fact it will refuse to compile the program. It will stop and give an error message telling you exactly what's wrong. So to sum up, if programmers are required to declare the types of the values returned by functions and of the parameters and of all the other variables, then it can be programmatically determined ahead of time what kind of value every single expression is going to evaluate into at runtime. So therefore, we can programmatically detect any type errors. A problem that comes up in static languages is how to deal with collections like lists and dictionaries. The problem is that if the members of lists and dictionaries can be of any type, then when we retrieve a member, it can't be known ahead of time, before the program is actually run, what type of thing that operation is going to retrieve. So for example, if we create a list here and assign it to a variable foo, and then we want to retrieve the item at index 1 of foo, the problem is that the get operation, or at least as we defined it in pigeon, might return a value of any type. And that just doesn't fit in a static typing system, because in a static typing system, it has to be known before the program is actually run what every single expression is going to evaluate into, what type. The underlying problem here is that for static typing to work, variables must have a fixed type. That is, you can only assign values of a particular type to that variable. While lists and dictionaries aren't variables per se, they are very much like variables. They consist of slots where you can assign values to those slots. If we want those slots to be fixed in type, that means we can't have lists and dictionaries that can consist of any type of objects whatsoever. Instead, we have to have lists and dictionaries which are homogenous, which are made up of only one type of thing. So, for example, instead of having just a generic list, we would have a number list, or num list, which can only consist of numbers. And so when we want to retrieve an item from the num list, we use the get num operation, and the get num operation is known to return a number. So it satisfies the static typing system. Heterogeneous collections, uh, that is lists and dictionaries where you can put any type of thing in them, are extremely useful and really not something you want to do without. So in practice, static languages do have some workaround whereby you can get the same sort of thing. But compared to dynamic languages, static languages make it much more cumbersome to deal with heterogeneous collections.